All right, and it looks like we are live. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Um, today is July the 20th, 2022. Uh, please excuse me. I just got out of the shower, um, but I just had like a strange epiphany or whatever. Um, for this show of the Daily Digital, I want to do something a little bit different than I usually do. Yesterday was the start of Black Tech Week, um, in which I will jump over here so you can kind of see uh, exactly what it is. Black Tech Week um, is out in Cincinnati, Ohio this year. Uh, it's a yearly thing that's been happening since uh, 2016, um, and it's all this week. And it's just essentially going over the different uh, tech companies. Well, I don't want to say just tech companies. So it's a lot of companies um, that are that have like black entrepreneurs. Um, just waiting for this to pop up here. Yeah. Um, so black founders are the fastest growing class of entrepreneurs in the U S in fact, in 2021, the number of black businesses increased 38% over just a year before, um, black tech week serves tech professionals and enthusiasts, funders, allies, and all members of the global black tech community. Uh, it's going to be hosted in Cincinnati this year, uh, history behind it founded by Felicia Hatcher and Derek Pearson. In Miami in 2016 so this started way out in Florida uh, they've been traveling the world since or I would say the country since at least um, and black tech week has been a beacon for black technology professionals for years each year thousands of people from many different industries backgrounds and experience levels gather together to learn fellowship and find home uh, so with that I just want to kind of because so I started going to black tech week yesterday um, and I loved it. Had a really, really, really good experience. Uh, met a lot of people, networked, of course. Uh, listened to a lot of speakers. Again, some of them in tech, some of them not in tech, but they had all a lot of good information to share. Um, and not one of them, and I kid you not, not one of them I already knew about. Uh, I probably ran across, I don't know, 20, 30 people. Um, uh, they were like, 20 speakers that um, spoke yesterday as well um, and I knew nothing about them so what I wanted to do definitely for the black community all this week while black tech week is going on I just want to shed light on some of these companies that we may not even know exist uh, or that we knew existed but really didn't know exactly what they did and so on and so forth again yesterday was the first day of black tech week um, I didn't have a whole whole lot of research uh, or whole lot, whole whole lot of time to do research on all of these different companies, all these different founders, business owners, um, tech enthusiasts, what have you. But what I want to do is actually just put them out there, shed a little bit light on them, especially for the black community, uh, so that we know they exist, and so that we can actually, you know, start doing business with them. Or, you know, I don't know there's a couple of venture capitalists out there uh, that may want to bring in money to our own businesses. Um, so without further ado, we will jump right into it again today. is going to be a little bit different. I usually try to keep my video between 15 and 20 minutes long, um, sharing about four stories or whatever, but I don't, to be honest, I don't know how long this is. Uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be about five hours. Uh, I've got stuff to do myself, but I would just want to take the time and provide a little bit of, um, clarity on who some of these people are, what businesses that, that, that they have. Um, and you know, it might be an hour long, might be 30 minutes long. I have no clue. Uh, so definitely bear with me. Take, I uh, appreciate you taking the time out to watch the show. Uh, and then we'll jump right into it. All right. So, so the first one here, and again, um, this is going to be pretty much all impromptu. Um, again, I didn't have much time to do research on all the different companies. I have about 19 of them, I think here to talk about today. Um, I just kind of scrolled through the list on the Black Tech Week. You guys can also check out the website, blacktechweek.com, and see all of these different um, key speakers that, that spoke yesterday uh, and the other days as well. Um, but so it's going to be all impromptu. I just kind of Googled the name of the company, um, tried to make sure that the link was the correct link, um, and then I just want to guys give you my first impression of who they are uh, and stuff like that. All right, so and I just got my list here. The first one that we have here is uh, Don Dixon, uh, and I'm definitely going to butcher this, um, Apogeny, I believe that's her name, Don Dixon Apogeny, uh, again, apologize if I didn't speak, uh, pronounce her name correctly, uh, but she has two companies that, um, she actually has, like, actually listened to her speak, she's a really, really good speaker, uh, she has five total companies or whatever, she started, like, when she was 21 years old, uh, which is amazing, 
Um, but two companies that she shared there was Flat Out of Heels and also Popcom. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump into that. So I just Googled Flat Out of Heels. Usually on Google, we have this, what they call meta description, um, that you can kind of get a brief description of what the company is about. Um, you can actually see, yeah, on Facebook as well. Um, if they have other stuff like Instagram and stuff like that, you can kind of read the description of what they are and what they're all about. Uh, I can probably already tell you just by looking at this. Oh, they got a start engine. Uh, so start engine is like a, a royalty. If you ever heard of like Shark Tank, um, <laughs> Mr. Wonderful on there, uh, Kevin O'Leary, he, he, he's all about like royalty and stuff like that. So he, I think he's a partner with a company called start engine, uh, in which they, um, uh, they, they invest in different companies based on like percentages that they can get back and stuff like that. It's actually, if you haven't heard of start engine, it's actually pretty good. One. I didn't know she was on there. Um, but yeah, so flat out of heels, uh, rollable, foldable machine, washable, cute and comfortable AF on the go flats. Um, don't get caught walking barefoot shot flat out of heels. Uh, okay. So it looks like they're on Walmart also. Wow. Uh, rollable yet flat and fashionable compact enough to fit in your purse and durable um flat out of heels is founded in 2011 by social entrepreneur don dickinson flat out of the heels offers stylish comfortable and rollable flats so it looks like basically as you see the image here it's all about rollable flats um, which i've actually seen a bunch of these like everywhere uh, in the past few years so i'm, I'm actually surprised i didn't know uh, this was like a, a black owned company that was founded by don dickinson i'll just click on the link here um, and yeah, so it looks like, yeah, it looks like this is more just an e-commerce website. Um, of course he sells flats, uh, rollable flats that are fashionable, I should say. Uh, there's a shop now button there, a uh, bunch of shop things there. So again, if you guys haven't heard of these flat out of heels, uh, especially the woman ladies, I know the heels are, um, very fashionable, make you guys look and feel wonderful uh, but as sometimes <laughs> your feet does need a break uh, so check out flat out of heels if you haven't heard them before um, and I always like to go to the about page which is maybe just in the yeah our story it's not in the main menu it's usually in the footer um, so about us there she is miss Don Dickinson or Dixon um, she was attending an event in South Beach, Miami, dressed to impress in six inch heels. After staying for hours, her feet were on fire and she desperately needed the affordable flats to get a relief. She had no luck. Um, Don sent out to create fashionable must have rollable flat that would be chic enough for the fanciest events, durable enough for everyday use and portable enough to be dispensed out of vending machines for convenience. Uh, and this right here is going to be a key thing when it comes to her next business. So I'm assuming she might've created um, her other business first and then came out with this because this is this is what all her next business is all about popcom um, So yeah, again, you guys can just go ahead and check this out um, Don seemed like a very wonderful knowledgeable person especially about business um, She talked about uh, I think one of the key things that I took away from her was that um, You need to set boundaries when it comes to oops And sorry, it's like real early in the morning. So the Sun is just not coming up uh, so please bear with me on the quality of the video. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, she talked about setting boundaries um, with, you know, anybody essentially um, because you need your me time. You need time to, uh, you when you, especially when you're building the business, you definitely need time to uh, step back and reflect on what the day has afforded for you. Uh, so the <laughs> so one thing is that she said she doesn't take any meetings before, I, I think it's like 11 a.m. or something like that, uh, which is crazy because you might have a venture capitalist willing to give you a million dollars uh, at seven o'clock in the morning and said, Hey, it's 11 o'clock. It's like either that, or you're going to miss out on this great opportunity. Uh, and you're just gonna have to watch my business grow without you. Um, so definitely set boundaries. This is one of the key things I took away from her. Um, and then I also want to show you Popcom. All right. So here we go. Popcom, um, say goodbye to low IQ automated retail machine. Say hello to powerful customer data. We make future ready solutions for vending and self service retail. Uh, again, I just want to, oh, she was on Crunchbase with this one. Provides touchless vending machines that track transactions to create live sales and re, um, product reports. Uh, so I just want to touch on that a little bit. So you, if you know the vending machines right now is just a box, glass window, you can see the products, you touch it, you get what you want. 
now what she's doing is adding AI artificial intelligence over into it. And the beautiful thing about that is it uses um, facial. She made a point about this. She said facial detect facial detection, not recognition. So it's not recognizing you and doing a whole bunch of stuff. It's just detecting that you are there. Uh, it's trying to detect if you're a male so it can provide you with male oriented advertisement or if you're female so it can provide you with female oriented advertisement, uh, which in my opinion is pretty powerful uh, because a guy might see something, uh, some sort of advertisement and has no dopamine effect to it um, and so on and so forth. But a, yeah, that looks better, uh, but a woman might see the same one and everything just starts firing. Um, so that's very powerful there. Uh, let's see if I go to the website popcom and there it is. I mean, these are, these are nice. These are really sleek. Um, wow. So welcome to Omni channel. We build software to revolutionize automated retail, engage with customers, understand sales, my metrics and sell more products with our digital pop-up shop technology. Uh, so I believe all of these are catered to different businesses. So she's more of a B2B, I believe. Uh, she doesn't just, you know, make these and then sell stuff out of it, except for her own, you know, rollable uh, flats and stuff like that. But she will, I guess, license these or sell these to different companies. Uh, you can put your own products in there. You can put your own advertisements in there. People can come in, use Apple Pay, use everything. I mean, these are these are like, I like that. I really, really like that. Uh, storefront reporting, monitor inventory and sales. Uh, that's something that I don't believe these analog uh, vending machines get now. You can't actually uh, monitor what's going on with them. Uh, crowd metrics, measure traffic at and around your machine. So you can actually see how many people are walking around your machine. If you, if you need to move it to a different spot, if you need to move it to a uh, better location, all that stuff. Demographics and sentiment, anonymous. And that's a key thing there. It's anonymous, age, gender, and emotional sentiment analysis during browsing. Uh, so it'll detect how they're feeling at the time and what they um, like. You know, you have different facial expressions when you like something and versus when you don't like something. So that facial detection will actually detect what it is that you are um, liking the most. So they, they know what kind of products to keep and they can know what kind of products to pull. Because if, any, if everybody goes, um, it's like say ice cream, if everybody sees brown ice cream and they say, Ugh, then it's going to say, hey, you don't want to sell brown ice cream anymore because nobody's actually buying it. Nobody's actually you know, um, liking it. Uh, but if you have a nice purple ice cream or something like that, it'd be a whole lot better. Uh, identity biometrics for age and ID restricted products. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, and bolster omni channel growth. Um, yeah, so this is this, I would definitely say this is a tech product. This is a huge tech product. Um, and again, it's all about selling stuff um without having to go to any store or anything like that it's all basically like a pop-up shop kind of thing um and yeah um nft art collection sold out in popcorn vending machines oh wow so this was this came out in june 20 i gotta click on this guys i'm sorry i've got to click on this so she sold nft art collection sold them. oh yeah i'm definitely gonna have to do a, a, a episode on this I'm going to do some more research on this. Again, I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. Uh, and I, I've got stuff I need to go do as well. But um, this is interesting. So I guess they did a vending machine out in New York. And Art hosted the first ever event where physical and digital NFTs were dispensed. Okay. And then she did it all through her vending machine. I mean, this is wonderful, guys. Um, definitely check this out as well. Popcom.shop. Um, I guess this is their uh, blog or something like that. So definitely check this out as well. Um, and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that's really interesting. That kind of just uh, <laughs> that kind of just struck me. Um, that took me by surprise there. I don't even know where I'm at now. All right, so let's keep on going, guys. We have next up Curl Mix uh, by Kim Lewis. Uh, well, I'm not gonna say by. So Kim Lewis was the one that was at the event. A company called Curlmix. I don't know if she's the founder, CEO, co-founder, COO. You know, um, again, I didn't have a whole lot of time to do a bunch of research on these companies, but again, I just want to kind of um, shed light on them. So Curlmix, 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 whatever is it? I have all these different companies up here, guys. Sorry, these should be actually in order. Oh, 
Oh, there it is. So Curl Mix, curly hair wash and go system with organic jojoba oil for moisturizing hair with lavender fragrance. Um, okay, so she does, yeah, beauty and cosmetics, personal care, uh, hair products for curly hair. I can, I can definitely tell you that. That is a big, big business. Uh, it helps to eliminate shed hair and uh, it helps eliminate shed hair that causes tangles, knots, and frizz, which you can rob your, which can rob your wash. Um, it's on Amazon shampoo for curly and kinky hair with aloe vera watermelon fragrance. Okay, so I'll kind of get a feel for what she does. Um, go to her website here, curlmix.com. And again, I'll put all the links for these uh, in the description for this video. Um, I don't want to do this now, although I want to, but. Uh, for busy, sophisticated women with who want stunning curls that um, last and get store credit if uh, you don't love it. Uh, what about the men? I mean, come on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, yeah, so curl mix. Okay, so we got different uh, aloe vera, grape seed, avocado, flax seed. Uh, let's see, does she have the learn? Let's see, about Chromex. There it is. Um, yes, yes, love seeing the black woman up there. We help you master your cur curls. We believe beauty is what you say it is. It comes naturally to us all, and we want to keep it that way. We believe in low effort, high quality solutions. We say no to complex regimens and unnecessarily eat up time. We say yes to simple ingredients and easy rituals that nourish. We serve our community. Meet our team. Wow. There is a lot of people on this team. I th this is so. This is definitely not a small company. Um, Chicago-based brand where we employ people who look like us. We pay our team living wages, not the minimum, and we are funded by seven thousand curl mixers who own equity and shares in our brand. We serve you and our community. This is what it means to be black-owned and operated. Yeah, I love this. This is amazing. Um, wow. All right, yeah, so that's um, that's Curl Mix there. Definitely go check out Curl Mix, ladies, for sure. Um, if you haven't tried her products yet, please do go try them out. Let me know how they are. I don't, <laughs> I myself don't have uh, much hair to uh, to do much with, but that's yet neither here nor there. Um, so the next one here, and I think I'm going to, instead of going by my list, my list is out of order, I'm going to go this way. Um, that's curl mix. Let's see next one center for black innovation by Derek Pearson or Derek Pearson was the one that was there um, Derek Pearson, I believe is also the person that uh, helped to found the black tech week uh, So the center for black innovation is a think tank and black innovation ecosystem building organization with the understanding that smart cities and something 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 um, the Innovation and Resource Center geared towards creating talent-rich spaces for the advancement and prosperity of black community. Let's connect. Um, so they also have their Google My Business thing over here. We focus on building asset and talent-rich spaces in black com communities where innovation can thrive by drawing, programming, uh, resources, and guiding our innovators along capital pathways through research and inclusive. Hopefully when I click on more, it doesn't... Okay, policies. I didn't want to go to another page. Okay, they were also on Crunchbase also. They got featured on Crunchbase. Cool. Uh, so I click on it, cfbi.org. cfbi.org is their website. Uh, it's the Center for Black Innovation. We create economic pathways through black innovation. The Center for Black Innovation is a think tank and black innovation ecosystem building organization with the understanding that smart cities and communities are formed by cultivating great, great leaders, entrepreneurs, and the real capital pathways that values black culture and communities as our greatest asset uh, about cfbi i got a little about section there uh there he is mr Derek pearson himself executive director star x smith that's a cool name senior vice president and the chair of the board miss felicia hatcher which i think i mentioned her earlier as well about um let's see if i can kind of get a brief brief about Oh, so they've been in business like 2012. Form Black Tech Week. Oh, Form Black Tech Week initiative to foster diversity. Oh, Black Tech. Okay. Um, excuse me. Here. Yeah, so this is this is a lot to actually capture here. I'll let you guys kind of go to the website and 
and check them out. But it definitely looks like they are a great resource for the black community, uh, especially innovators and stuff like that. I might have to take them on, uh, just get some more information on that because I've got a couple of ideas myself that I may need to uh, <laughs> may need to utilize them for. Um, but yeah, definitely check out um, the Center for Black Innovation there. And I want to jump over here to the next one. We have bandwagon. So bandwagon is a, a term that's used a whole lot. So when I typed in bandwagon, I got a whole bunch of different stuff. But then I typed in bandwagon Harold Hughes, and it came right up to what it is and who he is. Um, he's on Twitter. He is the founder CEO of bandwagon. He has seven current jobs, including director of Beam Founders, entrepreneur in residence at Furman University. Oh, cool. And venture partner at Republic. Uh, Harold Hughes is the co-founder of Bandwagon, a South Carolina-based experience technology company. Um, let's see. I want to learn more about Bandwagon. I'm going to have to connect with Harold on Twitter for sure. But um, let's see if I just... Yeah, there we go. So the homepage, Creating Communities. Bandwagon is a Greenville, South Carolina based experience technology a company that delivers solutions to elevate the experience of fans and events attendees our why bandwagon believes that every consumer is a fan and every fan is now a content creator with limitless technology sitting in their phone we create opportunities for fans and consumers to connect with their favorite entrepreneurs and brands by allowing them to mint uh oh mint i just went that was the word of the week this week guys mint moments memories and experiences as they seek out ways to not only preserve their favorite experiences but also ensure with cryptographic security that they are the true creator and owner of this user-generated um, content technology for the first time ever brands can access and purchase the user-generated content from their events uh with ease our proof of experience proof of experience oh i'm liking this even more because i'm like proof of experience blockchain provides peace of mind as uh, we use real-time data data to augment the content. We're partnering with Palm to deliver user-generated content based. There it is, NFTs. In an environmentally friendly way, our experience with Hyperledger Fabric distributed databases and hom homomorphic encryption positions us as the team to lead in this market. Proof of experience. Through our proof of experience uh, blockchain, we create incentive for the entire value chain from the fan capturing content to the artist or athlete whose name image and likeness yeah this is a this is actually pretty interesting and i have never even heard of this company um and they're all about like the nfts and stuff so home pays contact team uh, i don't see like a about section here but they do have a lot of information on their website so uh check out bandwagon guys check out bandwagon i'm i'm really liking bandwagon like, like i said they have a proof of experience blockchain which is something that's uh it's fairly new uh, NFTs are not new, but they are capitalizing on that and letting those NFTs um, be the um, be the source for fans to connect with, you know, uh, athletes, musicians, artists, and stuff like that, content creators or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I, I like that. All right, so the next one here is Black Ambition. Black Ambition with Felicia Hatcher. And Black Ambition is actually Black Ambition, if I'm not mistaken, is with uh, Pharrell Williams. I gotta, I gotta look that up. Uh, Black Ambition is a set of prizes to fund bold ideas and companies led by Black and Latinx entrepreneurs. Black Ambition is reducing barriers to capital. Um, they're on Twitter at Black Ambition PZ for prize. Uh, we power, we empower Black and Latinx and innovators uh, and communities to excel uninterrupted. It's founded by Pharrell. Yeah, okay. It's founded by Pharrell, led by Felicia Hatcher, fueled by Black Ambition. Love that. I was gonna say I heard of Black Ambition before. Pharrell talks about Black Ambition Initiative. So yeah, definitely. If you guys don't know who Pharrell Williams is, he's an amazing artist. Um, it's working towards working towards closing opportunity and wealth gap through entrepreneurship. Yeah, so it looks like they're a provider of capital uh, funds for businesses and stuff like that. Um, Felicia Hatcher, definitely, thank you for sharing all of this with us. Uh, I'm gonna hit the X button there. Black Ambition. 
Oh, so these, uh, I love this website already. I can tell you that now. So this is one of those scroller type websites where the whole screen just kind of does stuff while you scroll. It's not the traditional scroll method. Um, black Ambition is a set of prizes to fund bold ideas and companies led by black and Latinx entrepreneurs. It's reducing barriers to capital and bridging the wealth gap through entrepreneurship provides applicants with resources and access to a network of business leaders, joins the wave of efforts to open opportunity for black and like black and Latinx founders. And, it, um, these are United States. Um, so our 2021 prize winners, and I always like to go to stuff like this also, and just look at, you know, who else is partnering with them. Cause there's a lot of times it's black owned businesses. So prize owners, um, Replace live logistics, replace your paper with technology that bridges the gaps between civil construction, demolition, waste management, and then also Doso Beauty, which is black owned, pre stretched, hyperallergenic, itch free braiding hair servicing the globe. So, check out those companies as well. Again, this is all about shedding light on the black community and what they've got going on. Um, and yeah, so these are, oh, there's something. See how that's spinning while I scroll? I love when it does stuff like that. I'm a web developer, guys. I like I like cool stuff like this. <laughs> um, yeah, to get prizes. Yes, okay. So I like this. Um, so definitely check out Black Ambition as well. Here is their team: founder Pharrell Williams, Felicia Hatcher is the CEO, uh, Shane Orange, director of ops, Jermaine Jermaine Sherman. Um, sorry again if I put your name. Director of programs, Samaya Malik, Christine Joseph, Alexis Chin. Yeah, seems like they got a good team behind them as well. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about Black Ambition. If you guys, uh, I have never heard of them, um, but it may be something to look into so that you guys can, you know, <clears throat> um, get your businesses funded uh, through prizes. All right, so the next one up here is Fresh Fry. Uh, I actually listened to Fresh Fry also. Um, Fresh Fry was pretty interesting because... Um, I've never heard of cleaning oil before. <laughs> uh, I've, I've never heard of cleaning oil before, but purchase today and avoid supply chain disruptions. Uh, that's not what I want to know. Okay, transforming waste into promise to into a promising future. The Fresh Fry Pod is an innovative and easy way to, pro, an easy to use product that purifies cooking oil to help you focus on serving. Uh, so this is more of a B2B situation again. Um, all natural process that restores frying oil in an easier and more cost-effective way a product developed with both the user and the food in mind uh, so I'll jump into the oh and it's powered by plants cool cleaner frying oil pods reduce total frying cost by 25% on average with no additional equipment needed try us risk-free um, so essentially if you are in a restaurant business you have these pods here um, and what you can do is actually place these pods in the container overnight and then go ahead and clean your oil. So it extends the oil life. Uh, perfect for Southern fried chicken. Yes, it is. Um, and I actually want to go to the our story page to show you the guy. Hopefully he's on here. Yeah. So this here is. Um, uh, what's his name? Jeremiah Chapman. Uh, while studying chemical engineering, I mean, you got to be a chemical engineer to do something like this. At the University of Louisville, I would convert old oil from restaurants to biodiesel, and it was completely degraded when I got it. I remember when I was a kid, my grandmother would use potatoes to clean. Uh, my grandmother would use potatoes to clean cooking oil after frying fish, and a light bulb went off. Um, so yeah, that's 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 one of the things that you know. Uh, nowadays we have cell phones that does everything for us but back in the day uh it wasn't that easy um you had to actually make a way make things work for yourself and this guy he remember when his grandmother used to clean oil with potatoes which i never even heard of um i'm pretty sure a lot of people from down south they probably heard of that before um but it, that's uh that's interesting um we are committed to providing sustainable products in commercial kitchens fresh fries successfully redeployed 10 million pounds of waste by the end of 2021 and we'll repurpose 1 billion pounds of waste by 2031. So yeah, definitely, this is Mr. Jeremiah Chapman. He is a co-founder and CEO. Mr. Jacob Huff is a co-founder and COO. And then we got a couple more people on his team here. 
So yeah, um, let me know what you guys think about Fresh Fry. Um, Fresh Fry seems like a really, really good company in my opinion, especially if you're in the restaurant business, um, cooking fries or cooking fries, cooking chicken wings and stuff like that uh, to make your <laughs> to make your oil go a whole lot further. All right, so next one here is Aspen Apothecary. And Aspen Apothecary is by Meta Burke Williams. And Meta Burke Williams started a cruelty-free perfume for you as you are. Immigrant-inspired, made in the U.S., home to the cult fra favorite fragrance, Moon Dust. Um, so if you're into beauty, cosmetics, personal care, again, on Instagram, it's non-toxic fragrance uh, for you as you are, founded by two black girls. Um, again, one of them... <clears throat> When I'm being, um, not meta, sorry, Keta, K-E-T-A. When I, when I type stuff in, it does the auto dictionary and it said meta instead of Keta. Or it might be Keta. Sorry, again, I don't, I don't mean to butcher your name. Um, got new products here. Enter the site. Yes, please. Um, fragrance that makes moments. Okay. We took the ritual of storytelling and married it with the powerful effect of scent. We blend vintage traditions with science-based knowledge to create better for, uh, for you perfume and joyful moments. All right, so this is more like an e-commerce website, which is cool. Uh, selling perfumes, Aspen ap Apothecary, uh, quality ingredients, cruelty certified cruelty-free, non-toxic made in USA and recycled packaging. Oh, our story here it is. We are founded by two sisters inspired by a memory who believe in the collective power of scent. We believe that we are all deserve to smell good without feeling guilty. Read our origin story here. Um, I'm not going to go through all that. I do want to know what her sister name is, though. Um, our mother, a Jamaican immigrant, embarks on a tour as a backup dancer. Oh, that's cool. The act is small, but one stop Tunisia creates an unforgettable experience. 2020 inspired by mom's story okay Kaja okay so Kita and Kaja and they are the two so you can guys can look them up like on social media and stuff like that um, it looks like they started this in 2020 right around the pandemic wow wow during the pandemic you guys started this this is amazing and it's still going strong that's amazing um, all right, so yeah, if you guys haven't heard of Apothecary, uh, Aspen Apothecary, uh, check them out as well for your fragrance needs. Um, Christmas is coming up, so you guys get those Christmas presents out the way here. And I've got to get my mom something as well, so uh, we'll see how that works out. The next one is Revolt TV, which Revolt TV has actually been around quite a while. Um, and... This one is with, uh, where is his name? Detavio Samuels. So Detavio Samuels. Um, it's also it's an American music-oriented digital cable television network founded by Sean Diddy Combs and Andy Shun that launched in 2013. So yeah, it's, it's been a while, around a while. Um, uh, it is a space for unapologetic, authoritative voice of the hip-hop culture, which includes rap and R&B music. So you haven't heard of Revolt TV here? Um, definitely do check it out. I'm gonna. I know it's a lot of stuff on this website here. Um, uh, I think that's. I think that's Kevin Gates on a show. I don't know what show that is. Uh, Sean Diddy Combs on there. Puff Daddy. Um, yeah, so they do a whole lot of news. Yeah, a whole lot of new stuff here as well. Um, so yeah, check out the website revolt.tv. Um, check out their episodes. They got a lot of different uh, black-owned shows that are on there as well, um, and stuff like that. So the next one is Rare Breed Ventures. Rare Breed VC, uh, which actually I did not know VC was a top-level domain. I might have to grab me one of those one day. Uh, Rare Breed Ventures is a pre-seed fund that invests in exceptional founders, primarily outside of large tech ecosystems earlier uh, than anyone else. Uh, Rare Breed, uh, I think I have her name here, Margaret Natumbi. Margaret Natumbi, 
Um, started where Bree, I, again, I believe she started. I'm not sure. It might be just a, yeah, she's on the team with Matt Conwell, Kralija, and there's Margaret there. Um, a pre-seed and seed fund that invests in rare breed of founders. So if you're looking for funding for your business, um, you can definitely check out rare breed. Oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, rare breed ventures is a pre-seed fund that invests in exceptional founders, primarily outside of large tech ecosystems earlier than anyone else. We write checks of up to 250,000. That's a lot of money as the first or one of the first investors in exceptional startups. Uh, so you have a startup company, definitely check out rare breed. Um, you can find amazing startups anywhere in the world. That's hundred percent true. There are amazing entrepreneurs everywhere with great ideas. Uh, we can, we, that many traditional VCs do not understand or are not willing to understand. They don't take the time to look beyond those circles, uh, investing. I'm not going to read through all this. Sorry guys. I'm just trying to make sure we keep on time here. It's a lot, a lot. We got to cover. I don't think we're only like halfway through. Uh, Matt Conwell, the second is a managing partner at Rare Breed Ventures. Matt is a former software engineer and two-time founder. One of Matt companies failed. The other one went on to be a successful exit. Cool. Um, so again, I'm not sure what Margaret's uh, role is in it. I have to do more digging, do more research. Um, but there's Rare Breed for you guys. The next one is Quirk Chat, uh, which is a mobile app and Quirk Chat. I got it here and quirk chat was uh, I believe founded by B law uh, quirk chat is the easiest way to hash out your fandom theories discuss these shows you are watching and talk to other geeks so it's, it's all about what they call geeks I guess uh, people who are seem to be a little bit quirky uh, quirk, quirk chat is a social media app for the geek nerd fandom community uh, so if you're like an anime fan or you're really into gaming stuff like that um, join the Quirk Chat fam tonight as we discuss alternative life, punk, emo, goth. What was it like? Um, so it's on Google, it's, it's on Apple, it's on, it's on both those platforms. Uh, it's a community platform for all geeks and prioritizes people who are typically left out of geek fandom. Women, people of color, uh, LGBTQIA+. Um, it's a social, social video collaboration and channel chat app for geeks and hobbyists that emphasizes Community moderation and community building. So I'm gonna go to the website here. The website's probably not much since it's an app. Um, the place for geeks. Okay, so they do videos and stuff like that too. That's that's cool. For cosplay, movies, anime, gaming. Um, so what can you do on Quirk Chat? Well, a lot. You can share a hot takes on video. You can find your people. You can follow topics you love. Above all, you can be yourself, which is this is a, definitely a good thing. Join us in connecting people around what they love. So yeah, so Quirk Chat, if you are into, you know, I don't say different stuff, uh, but, but if you're into stuff like this, uh, oh, that's Sailor Moon. I'm, I'm kind of into all that. So Sailor Moon, Marvel, I don't know, oh, that's too small. Um, card games, that's Marvel too, I guess. Um, yeah, I would definitely say check out Quirk Chat. I I don't have any space in my phone anymore, guys. So I'm I'm gonna try to delete some stuff. Um, we've got a lot of like tabs to go through and whatnot. So I gotta go in and see if I can download that and actually just test it out, test wise with it. No no harm in that. Um, so yeah, so next one up here would be uh, Journey Foods, and Journey Foods is by Rihanna Lynn. Again, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, uh, but it's a data service and software for nutrition, uh, cost sustainability improvement. Um, software company that offers an integrative platform for food companies to effectively manage and launch uh, products and ingredients. Okay. Um, supply chain and food science software, our journey AI. Okay, so using artificial intelligence analyzes millions of ingredients the nutrients, supply chain insights, and more to help you discover the perfect ingredient for any product. Wow, okay. Um, that's journey, uh, well, that might be two different things. So this is journeyfoods.com. This is journeyfoods.io. I think the IO is the one I stuck with, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'm, hope, I'm hoping this is the correct one. Journey Foods have been Rihanna Lynn. 
Um, sorry if this is the wrong one. Launch your products faster. So discover how you can use Journey Foods to develop products faster. Access for to better data means better products. Um, find the perfect. Oh, it's the same one. It might be the same one. Find the perfect ingredient for different products. Develop with confidence. Stay organized and connected. Hear what other people are saying. They have different integrations. Why use Journey? Extensive database of ingredients, custom recommendations, intelligent portfolio. Let's go to the about page and see if she's on there. Uh, it's time to save the $3 trillion food, nutrition, and production uh, problem. Journey is a key for accelerating change, developed by expert scientists, recommendations to maximize nutrition, centralized supply chain data, AI powered. So once you have your product idea, it looks like this is the map, you have your product idea, you send it to Journey Foods. They do the research, they deal with all the nutritional facts, they handle all the regulations, FDA, USDA, and they do a supply chain and then they send it as a launch product. Uh, so they, they basically are the one-stop shop uh, for the journey of new foods. Uh, and I'm going to go to that journeyfoods.com one here just to see if that's the same. Because I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. So I just want to check that one out real quick. Journeyfoods.com. Yeah, I can't find the server. Cool. Click back on that. Um, so yeah, so definitely check out journeyfoods.io. Uh, not .com, .io. It's in Austin, Texas. Um, and see what that's all about. If you're into the food industry or have a product idea for some food, um, definitely check that one out there. The next one is Black At. Uh, black with the ampersand symbol at. Um, oh, Mint. I didn't see that before. So they're doing, okay. So we connect <laughs> our members with resources, business opportunities, uh, social experiences, and to one another. So you see guys, that's, that's that dopamine thing I was talking about earlier. But as soon as I see the word Mint, I know what it is. I get interested immediately. It like just starts firing all over the place. Anytime I see uh, tech related NFT blockchain stuff like that, I'm always just going to like zoom in on that and then just get a little sidetracked. So I apologize, but um, jumping into black at, they are on Twitter at black at, which is the actual a T X Y Z. Uh, even though they don't use a TLD, the top level domain X Y Z. Um, they're on open C. I actually clicked on their open C as well, which I want to show you guys. <clears throat> Um, they sell NFTs. That's their logo, BLK at. Um, but they have a couple of NFTs. If you guys like some of their artwork, definitely go out and uh, check it out. I'm not. Sh I'm assuming they're for sale. Uh, I'm not sure for how much. Usually on here it says it. Um, they own Black at XYZ dot ETH, and they got a couple of other things here as well. Um, so yeah, so check that out. I'm gonna go to their website. Oops, that's OpenSea again. Go back, go back, go back. Okay, black at dot XYZ. Uh, the black community travels. It's true. The black community is everywhere. We shape everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> uh, be ourselves authentically as black founders, funders, creators, and community builders. We deserve spaces to be ourselves unapologetically. Social capital is valuable. We connect our members with resources business opportunities, social experiences, and to one another. Seamless blend of Web3, bingo, Web3, with IRL. Uh, the core of our community will be a token-gated private group chat. We will also have host events for members to connect, learn, and share resources. Black At is here, a 500-member community that exists online and offline everywhere. Um, so I want to see, do you guys have a, okay, there's a menu. Um, home quarantine, so Mint. So I'm gonna to go to core team here real quick and then I gotta click on mint, I'm sorry. Uh, we we are creating a virtual community space for us. As black founders, creators, investors, and community builders, there are a few places online that allow us to be ourselves unapologetically and authentically. We want to blend the best of the online experience with the best of offline experiences in hopes of creating a digital and occasionally physical space that gives us the ability to add value by sharing knowledge while we uh, while also serving as a place to simply rest and uh, or rest amid overstimulation and uh, emotional assault that we all experience online in the workplace and as we walk around this world. Whew. Uh, Harold Hughes, there he is again, Mr. One, <clears throat> Mr. Bandwagon fan himself. 
uh, Chandra Washington, uh, she was at the event also. Uh, I don't think Audrey was there, Audrey Taylor. Um, but Chandra has a few things going on as well. Um, as the I think she's the founder slash co-founder of um, of Black At. Um, so yeah, definitely check out Black At uh, X Y Z. Uh, that's there. And again, if you haven't heard the X Y Z top level domain, um, it's completely secure. It's completely safe. It's just like a .com. Uh, all the .dot coms are just taken nowadays. So um, people have been switching it up. They've got .dot co dot org dot net you've heard those before um dot io which is more of a tech company and stuff like that dot xyz is another one that's uh, been booming in in recent days uh dot eth is also big right now as well so um definitely check that website out and <clears throat> moving on to the next one here lightship foundation so lightship foundation i think is actually in partnership with black uh black tech week uh, and if I'm not mistaken, they actually might be taking it over. I have to do some more research on that. Uh, but as an impact driven organization serving remarkable entrepreneurs and ecosystems, we leverage corporate partnerships, uh, specialized programming and more. Um, and with Lightship Foundation, Candace Matthews Bracken and Raquel Robinson are were at the event yesterday um, talking about okay so it's like a boot camp accelerator um, light ship as an impact driven organization no, 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 no. capital investments to drive growth within the minority innovation ec economy light ship provides remarkable founders the resources and directions their businesses need to scale yeah, so they have an accelerator, they have a boot camp, and a Twitch pitch. I guess you can pitch on Twitch, which is actually pretty cool. Um, I'll just go to our team real quick and see. Yeah, so there's Candace Matthews Brack Bracken, Brackeen maybe, sorry. Uh, Brian Brackeen, I guess they're related or maybe married, I'm not sure. Uh, Alexis Austin, Siobhan James, Raquel Robinson, that's her, that was there. Marlon Avery, my man, too cool. And <laughs> hey, that's one thing about black people, man. We we gon we gon we gonna look nice. Like I know most websites to go to, everybody got a suit and everything, tie and all that stuff. Uh, my man got the <laughs> got the brim on with a t shirt. That's that's what's up. Um, Vanessa Masoon and Grant Collinsworth. It looks like they're all on the team. Uh, Tulsa, Detroit, Cincinnati, Miami. Uh, we are based in focus on the Midwest, which has surpassed other regions in exit valuations despite receiving less than half of the investment dollars taken in the other regions. Lightship supports remarkable entrepreneurs and in emerging innovation hubs and contributes to economic development and job growth at the municipal, state, and federal levels. Okay, okay. Um, Oh, it looks like they are actually in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so anybody in Cincinnati, check out check out Lightship. I mean, they're they're right there in your home backyard. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, next up we have over here is Blank Magazine, uh, which I've actually heard of. Blank Magazine. This is probably one I have heard of. I haven't dove too much into it, uh, just because I always thought it was like a fashion magazine, and I'm not like really 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 big into fashion uh, i'm getting big more into it now uh with my own personal clothing brand um but I've, I've never actually like done massive research on fashion i just always liked um liked what i like pretty much um and i feel like i'm pretty fashionable i don't know what you guys think uh so blank is a creative platform that presents a diverse and underrepresented Perspective of the fashion, art, and music world. We are a quarterly print magazine. Okay, so they want a quarter. Um, Black-owned and independent fashion magazine and creative platform featuring diverse talents and perspectives. Um, it's independently published magazine founded in 2011 covering fashion, art, and music. Its owner and editor-in-chief, Tanisha Carr, which she was there yesterday. Um, they've got a blank mag on Twitter. They got a LinkedIn, Pinterest, Facebook. I mean, all these social media channels you can find. Blank Magazine. I just want to click on the website here. Uh, it's kind of like Revolt TV. It's more informational based. Uh, looks like covering fashion, art, culture, music, 
Um, you can subscribe to the magazine, all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, definitely check out Blank Magazine. I am personally not subscribed to it. Uh, I probably will since again I'm trying to trying to trying to get this clothing brand off the ground. Um, and then this been taking a while since it started during the pandemic and had to shift gears a little bit. But um, yeah, definitely want to keep up with the trends, see what's going on, um, stand out be unique i mean this is this is what uh everything is all about um nice all righty so moving on forward here uh the honeypot the honeypot is actually a term um that i've heard before i honestly can't remember exactly what it um uh, what's it called what it what it meant but it looks like the Honey Pot is actually a company as well, and the Honey Pot is by Bia Dixon. I think her name, real name, is like Beatrice, uh, but she goes by Bia or B, maybe. Sorry. Uh, powered by herbs, safe for your most sensitive parts. Find the best products for you. Plant derived feminine hygiene products. Dermatologist tested to kind and kind to skin. Say hello to the virtue of feminine care. With our natural washes, wipes, and pads, the Honey Pot seeks to promote female health through plant-derived something something. Um, is Honey Pot still black-owned? Why would they ask that? The company known as Honey Pot, quote, natural to some customers, that was part of the appeal, plus the fact that it is black-owned. Okay. I don't know if that was that one as a question. Um... Plant derived vaginal care system on the market. It's in Target. Cool. It's in Target. Shop Target for a wide assortment of honey pot. Uh, it's on Amazon. It's featured in the Washington Post. So yeah, they've, they've been doing quite a bit. Um, they've been doing quite a bit. I'll click on the website here. Hopefully, again, this age it says age for 16, 16 older. So if anyone is watching uh, under the age of 16, I am sorry. Uh, hopefully, okay, yeah, this is fine. No, this is fine. This is going on YouTube, so should be all right. Hopefully, um, give your on give your honey pot a fresh start. So again, e-commerce based, just all about selling their product. Um, ladies out there, this is definitely for the ladies. Um, Mysterious, or there she is, B Dixon, CEO and co-founder. Um, this is her personal story here. What is a microbiome? You may have heard of the term microbiome before. You may have. Oh man, I wish you would have gave it a little snippet of what it is there. I don't. I can't. <laughs> I can't click on the whole thing. Um, the hive. Okay. Uh, we're out here. Target, Walmart. We out here. Bed and Bath Beyond, Walgreens. Uh, I'm just gonna go to our story real quick. Um, there she is again. So I don't know. I mean, this is this is uh, something uh, as a man, nothing I have to deal with. Um, but I know women, ladies, uh, definitely this is something big, um, and that's in that aspect. So I would definitely say check this out if you haven't heard of it before. It seems like she is all natural um, and puts a lot of care into her product because she, I mean, she uses it for herself, and that's how the vision for it all started. So um, any ladies out there who wish to uh, uh, check them out, the website is the honeypot.co um and yeah uh definitely give her give her a try all righty um so next one here is streamlytics and streamlytics is by uh angela benton i believe her name is provides ethical people powered data from today's fastest growing communities across the u.s uh it's creating the future of data transactions our b2c so business to customer Products help users reclaim ownership of their own data. Just human-led data, Streamlytics provides clarity through safe and ethical access to accurate consumer activity uh, from all aspects of their lives. Um, they got a looks like they got a Google My Business here, but they need to expand on this a whole lot more. Give some more information on there. Use Google to your advantage, guys. SEO, search engine optimization. You got to use Google to your advantage. Um, there's still Crunchbase. Provides clarity through safe and ethical access to accurate consumer activity. Um, they're on. They're on. Okay, they're on Globe Newswire. 
um, groundbreaking new method method to value something. Um, yeah, so I got again, man, I got to do like research on all these companies. They all these companies have a lot of good stuff going on. Human powered data that powers the future. No tracking, no cookies, just human led data. Okay. Excuse me. Stream Linux provides clarity through safe and ethical access to accurate consumer activity from all aspects of their lives. Uh, so I can already tell what this is about. If you heard of Facebook, which probably everybody has, um, they've been doing a whole lot of tracking your information, tracking your data. Uh, it looks like the way that she's doing this, we focus on density, not measurement, is by not unlock the power of actual usage data reflective of how the people create data today across all platforms simultaneously. Um, ooh, code. Um, sorry. Uh, custom data feed ROI, how our customers use our strategy, competitive intelligence, customer acquisition. Yeah, okay, so basically if you go to a website, you get data uh, or data taken from you by the person who has the website. Um, so now I guess they're doing it in a more safer way, it looks like. I got, again, I had to do more research on this. Branding and messaging, corporate strategy, customer acquisition, competitive intelligence, um, more code, standard data feed, how our customers use it to take action, machine learning, programmatic, ready to get started. Yeah, this is one I'm going to do more research. I'm, I'm just kind of giving it a quick snippet of what I think it's about, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm one of those people that have to like kind of look and see, okay, how does this process work for me to fully understand um, what is going on in the back end of it? Uh, I see down here it says do not sell, which probably says do not sell my information, do not sell my data. Um, so yeah, it doesn't track you. There's no cookies involved, stuff like that. Okay. Um, so the next one here is Canvas Beauty Brand. And Canvas Beauty Brand is uh, by Stormy Steele, I believe her name is. It is all about helping our kings and queens look their best. We specialize in hair growth products, uh, but offer skincare and merch as well. Who is the owner of Canvas Beauty Brand? Uh, Stormy Steele, I'm assuming I got to Actually, let me just click on that. Uh, yeah, Stormy Steele, okay. Uh, she's a founder of the hair care brand Canvas Beauty, a company she created from her kitchen experience. Canvas Beauty booked nearly 20 million in sales last year after Steel used paid social media advertising. Um, and I was in 2021, so yeah, in the pandemic, she made like 2020. Uh, she made like 20 million. That's amazing. Um, so I'm assuming this is going to be again one of those e commerce websites. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. She has an Instagram, she's on Amazon, Facebook. Uh, she's on Better Business Bureau, BBB. She's in Target. She's in CVS. I was just in CVS yesterday, too. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna have to check on that. That's pretty interesting. Um, so Canvas Beauty Brand. I mean, she might not be in all CVSs around the entire U.S., but uh, being in one is a big deal. Canvas Beauty Retails, new IT brand. Uh, Sally Beauty, as seen on or as seen in. Everyone's favorites, Canvas Beauty Sellers, uh, Starter Set, Hair, Blossom Serum, The Pink Kit, um, The Premium Line, Goat Milk Skin. Okay, so she's using goat milk with this. That's interesting. Got body butters, fat conditioners, hair milk, body washes. Oh, nice. Okay, so it looks like they restore health in your hair too, help it grow. Yeah, Stormy Steel, CEO, it's important for you to know Canvas Beauty Brand exists as a suicidal. Oh, I was a suicidal. Wow. She has an interesting story. Um, yeah, so. Okay, I think she sells other products as well, looks like. Unless that's canvas merch. Yeah, I got, got articles. Okay. Um, again, check out the website. Check out the social media. Um, I just want to... I don't see an about page or anything like that. Um, out in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, so yeah, so if you are looking for, this is another beauty brand here. If you guys are looking for, 
um, some of her products. Um, I would, I'm actually pretty interested in the, in the goat milk uh, products there. Uh, but yeah, check those out. All right. And then for uh, the last one here, um, this last one, I, was, I wasn't able to find much on it at all. I did uh, find like a sub website, which is, I think it's like a parent company um, for it. Um, but let's jump right into it here. So the parent company is literally called the parent company. Uh, it's a social equities venture. So SEV uh, was the name of the company um, by, if I remember her name right, um, Mary Pryor. That's the one that was at the event yesterday. Um, she is a co-founder of Canaclusive. Um, and what this company is all about, uh, so the parent company, Social Equity Ventures Fund, was established to give black and other minority entrepreneurs an equal opportunity for participation in the legal cannabis industry. Minority communities have been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs, facing socioeconomic disadvantages over generations, as well as barriers to entering the multi-billion legal cannabis industry. With an initial funding of $10 million plus 2% of all future net income, this fund seeks to discover the industry's future entrepreneurs of color offering them the capital and mentorship needed to build generational wealth as part of a more equitable and diverse cannabis industry led by Sean, oh, Jay-Z, led by Sean, Jay-Z Carter and Desiree Perez. This fund will identify and invest in the next generation of cannabis businesses, leaders who are building value for their communities and diversity for our industry. Social equity ventures will also leverage the operational uh, leadership of the parent company to help drive the success of the portfolio companies uh, so basically they do funding so if you guys i mean this is uh, part of their portfolio here they have two companies uh josephine billy's by whitney betty or beauty um and it's an independently owned cannabis retailer and that will be one of the first black owned retail locations in los angeles which is great jesse grundy has the peaks company uh, which i'm assuming again uh, distribution license via oakland's bringing culture to the legal cannabis. Yeah, so I guess I guess they're doing uh, cannabis. So this is all cannabis related. Um, we got George Atala, assistant director, CEO. Oh no, this is different companies. So I think these are more like, um, okay, advisory committee, yeah. So they're not actually a part of the company. They're more, she looks familiar. And Angela Rye, oh, NPR, okay, that's why. Impact right okay. Um, so yeah, so check that out as well. Definitely if you are in the cannabis industry. Um, and that is it, guys. Again, I don't I don't know how long uh, this video is going to be. I've got to edit a few things out and all that stuff. Hopefully it's not too too long. Um, but hey, if you guys did not know about any of these black owned businesses, black owned companies, uh, black owned entrepreneurs, tech enthusiasts, all these wonderful people that's been doing great things around the uh, community please feel free to check them out on twitter on instagram they probably have linkedin as well um and see what they've been up to i mean check out these companies um support them 100 percent um and yeah i mean that's that's about <laughs> that's about it like i said my main goal for doing this was to shed light on some of these companies other than blank magazine which i've heard only a little bit about i haven't heard of any of these companies and that was only day one day one so there's a lot more that's going on uh, a lot more to see a lot more to do um today is day two i'll be attending uh as well and i'll report back tomorrow about everything that i that i learned um so you guys have a great wonderful rest of your day i appreciate your time i'll put all the links to all of everything in the bio um um if you have any questions hit up the comments check me out on social media as well i'm pretty much on everything linkedin instagram facebook TikTok. So, um, yeah, you guys have a good one and thanks for your time. Have a see you later.